Hello, you guys. So it's 3 a.m. here in Ecuador. I can't sleep. I haven't been sleeping well for a while now. Actually, it was like I got back from my last vacation. Um, just a lot of things going through my head. Some of them are personal, so I'm not really going to get into that part. Some of them are, of course, external, just... Um, some another aspect of my own personality that I honestly say that I <laughs> I have to honestly say I don't like about myself is um, I am definitely somebody who takes things very much to heart and I brood 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 over topics and thoughts a lot maybe that's Mm. yeah and I don't know I think a lot of people have the ability or more so the ability to shut out what is happening in the world actually I know for a fact that most people do and uh, that's something that I personally can't when things happen, even if they don't directly impact me per se, you know, I already, my head start going like, okay, what are going to be the consequences of this in the long run? I think, again, this is one of the reasons why those of you who might have watched more than a handful of my videos already know and seen that over the years I've become increasingly frustrated in a lot of my videos because a lot of the talking points in the news, in the media, in the in the politics, I've already anticipated them occurring as they do, and so I I get like <laughs> pre frustrated for things that haven't actually even occurred yet, but there's a good chance that they will, and um, so like. So I don't know, like, I'm, I'm being very, I'm feeling, this whole week I've just been feeling very melancholy for all kinds of, like, little things. Uh, I actually went on Wednesday and I got an HIV test. It was negative. But, like, as a gay man, I just personally always feel like it's a responsibility of mine to get tested frequently. Um, and it... Every time, like, I have to get tested, I naturally become very melancholy because even though I would say by gay standards, I live a relatively risk-free existence, um... It's like, it's a fear that I carry with me. And not even so much for, I think in this day and age, you can live with HIV relatively healthy and it doesn't impact like your lifespan or anything anymore. But more so that it, I think in terms of my own personal feeling of being a cliche, if I ended up catching it is something that I think I would struggle with more so than the actual disease um because something that I've always found very unattractive in other people and myself included is when people are a cliche of whatever group they belong to so if you're a cli if you're a gay man and you're a cliche gay man or if you're a black person and you're a cliche black person, if you're a woman and you're a cliche woman, I always found that a very unattractive trait in people because it makes me think that these people are caricatures, maybe? I don't know. And that's just something I personally have never wanted to be. Um. So that, and then, you know, of course... For those of you guys who watch the news, you know about this about the shootings in the U.S. again, and you know the the news has become 
so divisive as well and I like I, I say in my own I mean I've said it in my own channel and like my videos that I've personally become a lot more red pilled and I think for a lot of people that was such a negative another another of my many many traits that people don't enjoy <laughs> um I think that added again to a lot of people going like oh, because I think for especially people in my community that is considered a big time backstabbing because if you're gay, you have to be a Democrat. If you're gay, you have to be left. Like it's 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 another one of those requirements of signing the LGBTQ seventy seven F minus sign up down ampersand community is there's this unwritten contract that you have to be left. Um and I like especially like now with these shootings again I just I am so I'm actually literally repul I'm I think one of the things I think a lot of people and this is that I I have to, I don't know how else to say it and I don't know how to say it in a non very blunt way but I think that I actually at this point in time in my life have just such a general repulsion for the vast majority of people I meet and interact with and you know especially the way the media represents its news anchors and its commentaries people I, I just find we have all completely lost any sense of decorum and integrity and work ethic and honesty and you know everything is turned into a way to sensationalize and make money and pushing narratives and i think this is something where also on youtube i've always been very frustrated when i look at counterpoints to myself on YouTube and how much of it I think is not even them really saying what is the truth, what is really what their belief is, their honest opinions. It's all just sensationalism to, you know, get clicks and to get likes and to get subscribers. And it's and the, the nonstop, you know, you have to come to me if you want real news coverage. You have to come to me and you make sure to click my like button. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to, you know, and by the way, here's our sponsor. <laughs> and it's just all so tacky and disgusting to me. And I, I can't, um, because like even now, I think we're just constantly in, in, in every topic, we're being torn more and more into this binary system of left and right and I, I just I even though there's a lot of topics where now by what is socially considered I'm leaning more right I I just find it so disingenuous because I I do watch left-leaning pundits and right-leaning pundits and it's like now the right-leaning pundits again are co of course right away are going into this super defensive stance of you know, you know, this would have happened even if we didn't have these kind of gun laws. This would have happened. And, of course, the left right away is like, this is all because of the right. This is all because of the, people, the Republicans and their stupid gun laws and they're, and they're wanting to have gun laws. And, I'm kind of, and the thing is, I, I find this so disingenuous to what is actually happening in the world because I'm like, you know what? Can we just stop with the bullshit? Can we all just stop with the bullshit? Can we stop with the left and the right and this is the right opinion this is the wrong opinion this is this is the liberal opinion this is the conservative opinion and actually talk about the fact that people are being gunned people are being gunned down and killed in public spaces and regardless if you want to be like the right and want to blame it on mental health or if you want to be on the left and you want to blame it on the on gun stuff it's like you know what just take three seconds and then look at our human history. And the this kind of stuff did not happen 
15, I don't know, I don't know when the first, like, Sandy Hook or Columbine, when was that? But, like, that was, like, when all of this kind of stuff started. And before that, it did not happen. And before all, before those things started happening, 15, I don't know, 20 years ago or something like that, people had guns. A vast majority of Americans had guns in their house. There was the same amount of access to guns. And this kind of stuff still didn't happen. So it's clearly not a gun issue. Because for the majority of the Ameri- like the U.S. history, people had the right to own guns in their own house and have easy access to them. So you're not telling me that for, for this whole time it wasn't an issue and then all of a sudden, like 15 years ago... A, all of a sudden, it was like, oh, kids came to realize, oh, well, we can take guns and kill each other with it. No. Um, also, the whole same thing with mental issue. I, it, like, This isn't a mental health issue either. Up until 15, 20 years ago, you know what? Guess what? Not every kid had ADHD and ADD and depression and gender dysphoria and you know had to be pumped full of Ritalin and all kinds of chem- all kinds of chemicals and med- medicine and all this kind of stuff. Like all these things didn't exist up to fifteen to twenty years ago, and now it's like they're just commonplace. Like I was actually shocked to find out that there had been several shootings in the U.S this year that I did, that didn't even come in the news because it became it's become so commonplace it's not even in the news anymore and we i find it so disingenuous by the media like i ever said in my last video social media is honestly the worst worst has really brought out the worst in human beings and all of us in all of us including myself you know because I, even this week on Facebook, like the one platform I still have, and even that I shouldn't have anymore, you know, it's so easy to see like a little five second video that somebody has edited in such a way to, you know, get a certain emotional reaction out of people. And of course, people comment and then, you know, I'll comment on something and then it really quickly turns into really mean commentary and name calling and it's like yeah if you've met if you met this person in real life you probably would never talk to each other that way like everything about social media is set up to give us disinformation to be disingenuous to cause us to become more and more stuck in our own way of thinking to actually hurt communication we're constantly thinking that it's opening communication but it's not because people don't interact with each other in real life as they do when they can anonymously be a keyboard warrior at home and be like, well, I can write whatever I want and this person can't do anything to me. And like, it's really brought out the worst in people. And just now this coverage again with, with the shooting and I'm kind of like, no, what we really need to look at is how both the left and the right have completely, completely messed up the millennials and Gen Z by just pumping these generations full with all of the wrong messaging that you could possibly do. Consumerism, narcissism, selfishness, the ego, you know, just just every bad characteristic that we could have encouraged We've encouraged in these last two generations. And you and we can see now what's happening because of it. Like these kids, young adults, are completely lost in this world. I mean, they 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 have absolutely no self-esteem, they have no work ethic, they have no integrity. I always get back to integrity because that's the thing that bothers me the most that's been lost in the world. You know, um, all of them want to become YouTubers or they want to be on like some reality show. And, you know, it's all about like, I fucked my six neighbors. I don't know which one the daddy is. Let's find out on this this year's episode of Big Slutty Neighbor Fucking I, I Eat Cockroaches for Money, you know, episodes. Blah, blah. Like, it's just, you know, and try to get as many likes and subscribers as you can, you know, it, it, it just... And all the social influence, like just, they're being pumped full of every, all of these 
forms of this need for attention, this need for constant affirmation, this, key, this constant need for validation, like, and actually within themselves are completely hollow because we haven't taught them to be like, hey, life is hard and you have to learn to actually really love yourself and respect yourself and somebody who really loves themselves and respect themselves, you know, they don't weigh 500 pounds and, you know, try to convince everybody else that they have to be fucked. They don't go around changing their pronouns all, every three days because they're completely confused and they're trying to figure out what the fuck is wrong with them. And the only way they can think of doing it is by getting validation from strangers. You know, um, they people who have a healthy sense of self and aren't pumped full of all these chemicals and drugs that the big pharma is pushing on you, they don't fall apart because their teacher gave them a bad grade in school and so they feel validated in shooting up an entire school and killing people because of it because my feelings were hurt and I wasn't validated. I mean, oh, it's just all going the wrong. It's all just going wrong. It's all, all going wrong. And there's just nobody left in media that is willing to take the chance of potentially being unpopular, but doing the right thing. But doing the right thing and actually saying, look, let's just all stop with the BS. Let's just all stop about, I need a million sponsors so I can go and you know tell everybody else we need to push socialism, but behind their backs, I go and buy $6 million mansions and go on all these vacations. You know, they just just somebody who like actually legitimately cares about humanity and the direction we're going. And none of these people, I feel like, do because it's all about just saying the things that they know they're con the people that watch them and follow them want to hear, so that they can get more likes, so they can get more looks. You know, every story is sensationalized like crazy just to get more likes and to get more looks, and. Very, very few, few like, it's, just, it's just something that is really lacking in humans, is very few of us are willing to do the hard work and the research ourselves and do any of the thinking ourselves. We all end up in the, most of us end up in these bubbles, we have the couple of people we follow, and whatever they say, that's what we believe, that's the truth, that's how it happened, and, and nobody wants to go against what they've seen as now their click or their people, or question anything because it's like, oh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to rock the boat. I don't want to be in an uncomfortable position. And that's why even in my last video, I said, I don't give, I, I, I'm sorry. I don't give a shit about whether people think I'm left or right. I take everything and I think about it and I, and I, and I just feel like everybody is being so complacent and lazy in just not being willing to do the hard work themselves. And that is yet another aspect of why we are where we are in society, society these days. You know, it's so easy to be like, well, I don't want to do any of the thinking. Okay, well, I'm a Democrat, so I'll just let I'll just let some random person in the Democratic Party or some Democratic social media news anchor, they'll decide what I'm supposed to think. I'm not even going to take the time to see if they, ed if they didn't edit the video or the footage in such a way to make me even believe what they're saying. So, okay, well, that's just my opinion. Boom. You know, I, it's just... It, all of these things are compounding to the world that we live in nowadays. And it's just, it's, on the one hand, everybody wants to bitch and moan and complain. On the other hand, nobody wants to do anything or have any integrity about it. And it's just, oh God, I just feel. I don't, I just don't see how this is going to end well, especially for the Western world, you know, and. One of the things they, they keep saying in all the Western news, like it's, if it's Europe, whatever, they're like, oh, a big reset is coming. Yeah, and there is going to be a big reset because the Western world, the Western world is at its end. It really is at its end. Like we have, we have encouraged idiocy and vulgarity and tackiness and complacency so much within us and just fed people into this into this idea that they just constantly need to have validation for all of the wrong aspects 
of what uh, what they can. You know, validation for all of our tackiest behaviors, all of our nasty vulgarities, everything that is very sexual, everything that is very physical, everything that is based off of consumerism. These are all the things that we've taught like young people to seek validation for. Heaven forbid you might actually take the time to care about your intellect, your hard work, your achievement, you know, just... It's just, oh God, we just live in such a gross society like these days. It just, it's such a gross, gross, gross time to be alive and, and to think and like, and that's why I said in the very beginning of this video, it like, it frust like, I, 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 I wish so, like, I, you guys don't even know how many times I wish I could just be one of those people. Just, yeah, just be one of these sheep. Just be one of these sheep and just literally, I go to bed at night and I watch my stupid reality TV show and I'm like, okay, <laughs> and I get my stupid laughs off of somebody, you know, bragging about like i fucked 16 men and i don't know who the daddy is ha, ha, ha. just be like oh <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> you know and then go to bed and not think about anything and not dream about anything and you know hearing about school shootings and wars and people thinking about going back to the masks now because now there's monkey pox and it's super scary and everybody has to go back into quarantine and you know and just kind of going like, oh, okay, yeah, well, look, do my little click on my like button, and okay, well, I'm a good person. I can now go to sleep and not have to worry about anything. Like, I, I on the one hand, I'm repulsed by people like that. On the other hand, I'm very jealous of people who could live such a simplistic life in that sense and not think or worry about anything and, you know... I actually think that's probably where a lot of the problems came from with also like Corona and the masking because I think a lot of these people, in my opinion, are the same kind of people who are very willing to mask and, you know, it's kind of like, oh, well, you know, they took some of my rights, whatever. I can still watch my reality show. I can still eat my donuts. I can still eat my chips, you know, and then... And then when I get fat, and then, oh, I'll just go on some medication, you know, who cares if there's no long-term studies, and, you know, and then when I'm not feeling good, I'll write something random on TikTok about, I'm a fat, gorgeous queen, and whoever doesn't like me is just, is just a body hater and can't accept me for the gorgeousness that I am, and then get a bunch of people who don't know you and don't actually care about you or your health, give you thousands of likes, and be like, yes, queen, you go, yeah, yeah, grow a beard and wear makeup. You don't look ridiculous or anything. Yeah, you're fierce. Ah, there's no consequences in life. And now, and now stroll around naked. That doesn't matter. Ah, nothing, nothing matters anymore. Like, ugh. I sometimes just wish I could stop caring. I wish, I really wish I could just stop caring. It's like, and I don't see the point why I do care. What has it gotten me? What has it gotten me to care? What has it gotten me to actually, yeah, spend nights not being able to sleep because I'm worried about what's going to happen with our society and actually legitimately caring about people's long-term health and well-being and the outcome of society. Like, what has it got me? It's gotten me mm, vastly dislikes from people negative negative feedback because i'm supposedly so unkind and unfriendly um pretty much becoming completely ostracized from the gay community um you know shadow banned on youtube kicked off of like two gay dating sites kicked out of gay dating groups um my thing I'm probably already on my second strike on Facebook. I mean, like, I, I I don't even know why I'm doing it. What, what, like, you know, this and this is I'm very close to feeling again how I did a couple of years ago when I actually stopped YouTube because I, it, it's I'm back to now that point where I just feel like it's all completely 
it's all completely irrelevant. It's all completely irrelevant. I'm, I'm making my own life more difficult by giving a shit and actually legitimately trying to get people to wake up, to think, to consider, you know, legitimate self-love versus external validation by people who don't give a rat's ass about you. You know, thinking in the long term, taking on self-responsibility. Oh, God, don't even get me started on that. The fact that nobody wants to take on any self-responsibility. Everything is everybody else's fault. I'm the perpetual victim. Everything is everybody else's fault. Another thing that we've really put into the minds of millennials and Gen Z, which I think is such a disgusting thing for our society to put on these young people. And now they are going to go through life constantly and always thinking of themselves as a perpetual victim which is part of the reason why they crave this external validation all the time because they legitimately think complete shit of themselves. They don't think they have any self-worth because, you know, they've been told their whole life, well, if you're, if you're gay, you're never going to find real love and you're never really going to get real people to respect you. Oh, if you're fat, no one's ever going to really respect you. And, you know, if you're a woman, you're never going to really get anybody to respect you. And if you're black, you're never going to... And it doesn't matter what you do, you're always going to be treated like a second-class citizen, like all these like super, like these things are just not true. If you put in the work and you put in the effort and you show the integrity, like you will get the internal feeling of knowing that you did the right thing. And that is, that is going to give you so much more self-worth in the long run than this stupid validation for all of the flaws that you, that we've now told everybody oh yeah bring all of your flaws and all of your worst behaviors out into public like you should be proud of everything that you do that is tacky and gross it's like because heaven forbid we can't shame people for anything anymore this is just this ridiculous world we live in now i'm so i'm so tired you guys Tired, but I can't sleep. That's how I feel.